They shot this in three weeks. Yeah. It's wow. unbelievable. Wow. And, and it's not just recorded. I mean, uh, the wonder I have when I see it is of the style that Lindsay has given it, the, view, the point yeah. of view, the use of reflections and all of that. It's fantastic in three weeks. I think what you've achieved is amazing, and I think it's going to be a real sort of landmark moment, certainly in, in terms of British Asians in this country. Because Satnam, when your book came out, and everyone who read it would have maybe felt the same. I know you, me and you did, Nisha, because we've talked about it. It's so tenderly written, but it's the first time I'd ever read uh, a sort of a memoir of, from a Punjabi man in such an honest way. And what we know as British Asians is you just don't air your stuff. You know, nobody talks about it. You keep it here and you just carry it as this burden that nobody must know and everybody's carrying the same burden around. But you just did it. You just wrote about it. And now it's going to be on TV. And, and how, does that, how is that? How does that feel? Are you, is it... I mean, it's, is, it, is it slightly terrifying? I don't yes, know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fucking weird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I've watched it three times now, and each time I get anxious for about four hours beforehand. Uh, I cry each time. For about a year. And then I have to be in a room by myself. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, this stuff is not stuff you could ever is going to feel ordinary. Yeah. But I feel very, really lucky. I've been reading about memoirs that I adapted to write about this. And you know what, 90% of the time, the writer hates it, and they fall out. And I, not only do I not hate it, I love it. Yeah. And I'm just so lucky with Lindsay and Sasha and all these people. I mean, they got it, and they made it in three weeks. I've got to say, they, they looked really stressed out on the set. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a pleasant environment. I, wa I walked it on the set. It was a pleasant environment. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't what I expected. It's like proper, you know, intense, against the clock kind of environment, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nisha, you get so many manuscripts, so many books that you read. What was it about Satnam's book that made you want to turn it into a drama? Um, I mean, it was a, a while ago, actually. Was, I was just looking up last week. It was 2009 um, that I optioned the book. Actually, my brother-in-law, who's in the audience, tipped me off. And, um, and I read it, and it was really, you know, I was growing up always, I always saw the same kind of stereotypical stories about Indians on TV and this was just so beautifully written and it was about you know a family but it was complicated and, and I resonated with it so much just because second generation Indians have, have moved so far away from their parents in a lot of ways and, and that that really sung to me but it was just I think it was just one of the most beautifully written things that I'd read and um, and a lot of people wanted it so it was quite a tough so how did you do it um, I, wooed, I can't remember. I, wooed, I, I, I took him out to lunch or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, um, but, but we got it, yeah, we got it a while ago. And then the, sort of the story from there really was then uh, I took it to quite a few production companies who wanted it. Um, and kudos with the right fit. You know, it's been a kind of seven year journey to get wow. it to this. Gosh, so it's long. kind of, yeah, so it's a very emotional evening seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> It's, you've done a great job and then we've got to bring Mick on board and how do you take uh, a memoir a book with so much detail that's so beautiful and so tenderly written it really is a, it's a great book how do you then decide what to keep in and what to leave out to turn it into yeah, a I mean, 90 I, minute film yeah I think everybody on the film who'd read the book had so many things that they wish had been in the film I mean, <coughs> we just we couldn't use you know there's, there is so much there I think the the, the challenge was that the book zips all over the place in time and uh, it becomes investigative at times and I knew that just instinctively it had to be a, a linear story moving forward. So it was a case of simplifying and then it, it's weird when you adapt uh, a book, you start working very closely with it and then the whole process is moving away and away and away from it, oddly. So that in the end, I'm not looking at the book at all. But what I always knew I had on this was <laughs> Satnam would be there and he would have absolute veto. I didn't tell him this too early on, but, <laughs> but if, if he objected to anything, if I got anything wrong, I did obviously say with Nisha, but that, that would come into play. Would, but you must, did you write a draft first before you did oh, think, or were you quite involved in the writing process? I mean, how... How, as a writer, do you let someone else then write your book, your story? Well, Satnam and I didn't meet until yeah, I mean, the read-through. We right. talked about oh, this quite a lot. I think because it was such a personal story to Satnam, he amazingly trusted Mick and I yeah. to go away and, and 
just do the script. Yeah. And in fact, it wasn't until the story, the, the BBC Green Lit It, that we then... I was like, we're going to make this now. You need to read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I make sure the, you're okay. The BBC uh, got in touch and said, would you like to give a quote for the press release? And I said, yeah, I'll give a quote. And my quote went along the lines of, I'm very glad it's been green lit. I haven't read the script yet. <laughs> uh, and mainly that's because it was so painful. I just didn't want to... It sat on my desk for weeks and weeks and months. I mean, what I guess attracted me to the project in the first place, I'm from a very working class background similarly and the first one to go to university first one to move away um, first one to work in an industry like this so there's a kind of thread that runs through it of Satnam saying you know we live in two different worlds and and really that's what I connected with um, and, and Sasha like I said Satnam when you Sasha was cast you must have just thought yes I mean like I said you're not a bad looking fella but to get Sasha Dewan to play no, you I mean, literally one funny. person said you're more good looking than him <laughs> What's that, your mom? Who? What's that cut your mom? out the email, <laughs> framed it. <laughs> but also, what a gift of a character for a British Asian actor. Yeah, because um, you know the BBC uh, way in advance announce kind of projects that are coming up, and every actor looks at it and is like, "Yep, yeah, no, no, oh, in Indian guy, yes, yeah." <laughs> Um, and uh, I read the book, uh, you know, I thought I'd swat up before, you know, the audition. Um, and then I kind of let go of, of trying to audition because I was just like you, like a lot of people who read the book. I was just so proud that someone had written, and obviously about his family, but really about my family, yeah. to be honest. There were so, so many things I could relate to. Um, and then the, the script came along and then the audition and um, I read it and... Um, I turned down auditioning for it because I was too scared. I think you know this. Because um, I'd play, I'm, I'm so used to playing characters that are so different to me. Um, but this was so close to home that I just thought, I don't think I could, I could do it. Um, as much as it was Satnam's story, it was also very personal to me. And it was actually my, my girlfriend that said, you know, you keep, you've turned it down, but you keep talking about it. And <laughs> you know, I think you're scared, which is why maybe this is the project you should do. So I self-taped and met with Lindsay and Nisha, and um, it was great. And what was amazing, uh, Nisha, uh, Nisha and Lindsay, I don't think, give themselves enough credit. Uh, we had quite a bit of time to, to prep, and they were so specific about making sure it was done right, uh, not only to represent Satnam, but to represent a lot of... Uh, Sikh Punjabi families like um, well Hindu Punjabi like myself and so when I got onto set it, the amount of work they put into it was amazing because it felt effortless and it felt effortless because it was right um, it did, you know sometimes on jobs that we I've done we also tortured you yeah <laughs> no but it was it was worth it made him learn Punjabi yeah your Punjabi yeah. was great the, I don't, with, that's another thing because I don't with an English accent amazing yeah 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 spot yeah, on. yeah. Oh, accent <laughs> and I don't speak the language which is also, you've got to shame, admit shame. that doesn't speak the language. He's the only Asian I know who doesn't drive. Yes. To make our life better. All the things. <laughs> what? <laughs> those are all fake. Those. That coffees. shows you how amazing you are. And you've got the part. You can't drive. Don't speak yeah. the job. And when Nisha found that out, she's like, Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but what was it? Was it a different challenge having to play a real person? It. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It was. But I. Uh, obviously, I wanted to meet Satnam. Um, not just to kind of watch and see, you know, it was more to get his blessing, if that makes sense. Um, and it was so nice because I, I met him um, at the Times. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we just got, had, rather than kind of talking about the project, we were just talking about our families and stuff. And he was so great by just saying, you know, it's your part, own it. And that was, I just felt so free because I, I didn't have to, I could really bring myself to it. Um, Mick, I've got to say, like the scripts, for, for 90 minutes you've packed in so much because there's so many layers and so many themes that you've covered in there. And also your Punjabi is spot on. <laughs> like, the weirdest thing for me, I mean, I think Mick did an incredible job. The oddest thing is it has been changed in so many ways, so many details, and there's a whole new plot line, is that when I watched it, it felt really true. And that's because it was emotionally true. And that's what it felt like you know, when I wrote it, and that's what it felt like being in my family. And my mum watched it at the weekend, and she said, I can't believe how accurate it is. And I thought she'd say the exact opposite. Um, but that's because I think you connected with it. I think all these guys connected with it on an emotional level. Lindsay, you were saying that that's how you were brought on board, that you, you felt a connection to it because of your own background. But in the same way that I said the language is so spot on, there are some scenes, sort of nuanced little bits, like 
the, the chilies, like getting rid of the, the evil eye that all Indian mums do to all their children all the time. Um, my mum did it with a massive bag so that she's, because she never sees me. So she's, I'm just going to do the whole bag so I can just keep burning them for one, you know. So how did you, like, how do you get into that, those sorts of little, little things that just make it so accurate? I think the, the best thing about this was we didn't ever try and tell the sort of story of all Punjabi Sikhs or all second generation Indians or all people's experience with schizophrenia. It was so specific to each individual character. And I think that allowed us to really go into the detail. Um, and the chilies came from the book originally. And then um, we had a Punjabi consultant, Aisha, who's here, <laughs> who set me up with three very lovely aunties who sort of <laughs> took me through the, the scenario and explained it. And then... It I should was, say you also visited my mum. She would be very I upset. I did. I also, <laughs> yes. You forgot to... I'm in love with your mum. <laughs> you see so many Asian families on TV where, you know, there's a Bangladeshi and a Bengali and a Muslim and a Pakistan, and they're all in, meant to be brothers and sisters, and you're like, here. Yeah. So um, it was, I mean, really importantly, you know, everyone in that family is Punjabi and, um, and, and they look and feel like a family and I think that really helped. So, so we tried really hard to find Punjabi actors and actually they do exist. There's not very many of you, you're but you do exist, you're out there. Yeah. You said to me back when we were in the green room that to, to be able to speak Punjabi was really a precious moment for you. Well, no, it was to actually to act opposite yeah. uh, actors speaking uh, pr um, proper Punjabi. Yeah. Um, because obviously you're asking, you're asking me for about the script and stuff. That's right, yeah. And uh, they, they would make it, uh, Deepthi and Anupam would make it their own as well and uh, play around with stuff. And that was really, like I said, really nice to act opposite. It was just sometimes quite difficult in takes because you're listening for the cue. <laughs> oh, okay, it's changed to that. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got it. Next, we'll do another one. I've got it. Um, but it was, you know, that, uh, particularly that scene between uh, mother and son, uh, re resonated with, with me a lot, you know, it reminded me of conversations uh, with my own mother. Um, and uh, we hadn't, uh, I'd, I'd helped deeply with lines and stuff like that, um, but not really acted it. And then we, uh, we remember that day when we just, we just rehearsed it and we just kind of did the scene and uh, I was so like choked up. And I was like, just in the, in the bathroom, like, okay, put yourself together. Come on, <laughs> save it, save it. Um, but yeah, it was just, Beautiful because it was just so it felt so real and yeah. authentic, which you don't get to see. I have to say to all of you, to Lindsay, to Mick, and Lynn, to Nisha, there are moments that, that are so tenderly done and so spot on, and it is there are so many, so much packed in. There is obviously the issue of mental health within the Asian community that we don't talk about. Um, the, the, the scene with the father and when they get married and the kind of the early scenes, they. How does I mean obviously they're, they're, they're not scripted they they are just realised so how do you make a scene like that um, do do you is it is it your vision have you put it in the script well and I, I I will have done the the first just to describe the block of description of of what it should be but part of the process that we went through uh, coming up to the end was that I when it came to needing one more draft when we knew what all the locations were and everything else and I wasn't seeing these locations. And so the way it would normally go is that I would get lots of notes and then I would do it. And what I said to Lindsay was, uh, do you want to do this? Because you're going to be the one filming it. And rather than me translating your notes and then you having to translate them back. And so that's what happened, just, just in the, the, the final sort of go and push. So there were adjustments. Was it? The, the, you know, the script didn't come back with whole new scenes but it was just adjusted. And, and so Lindsay will have s known what she wanted to do, what her framing was, how many, how many cars she had. I mean, the wedding is a miracle given. They shot this in three weeks. Yeah. It's wow. unbelievable. Wow. And, and it's not just recorded. I mean, uh, the wonder I have when I see it is of the style that Lindsay has given it, the, view, the point yeah. of view the use of reflections and all of that, it's fantastic. In three weeks, yes. you know, as well as the details. So that was really good part of the process. And I really enjoyed that because quite often as a writer, you don't want to give your script up to the director because mm. they'll yes. change it in their own way, you know, and, and this just didn't ever happen. And I think miraculously, the three of us, we, we just all really wanted to make the the same film yeah. all the way through so there was just never really any 
disagreement and then Lindsay would just come up with a brilliant idea and we'd both go oh my god that's a brilliant idea and did you read the script and did the ideas come to you or does it come whilst you, I mean th how the heck do you do that in three weeks that's what we're um I think actually how it worked in the three weeks was we were just so lucky that everyone got on board all our HODs all our actors all our crew like everyone just did it. And sometimes you can have kind of resistance because obviously it's ridiculous to be doing it that quickly. But you know, like our makeup department, we're just putting wigs on in 10 minutes, like production, we're building bathrooms as we were shooting something else. Like, I don't think our cinematographer had a lunch break the entire time. He just, you know, was lighting all through lunch. So we're just a lot of prep. And Adam, our cinematographer, and I, we just sort of really interrogated the script beforehand and I did the blocking and then we just shot listed everything so we knew what we wanted going in but then we had the freedom to to play with it thank you Satnam for sharing your family story because I think it will make other people do the same I think we'll watch it families will watch it and it'll make them possibly have dialogues amongst their own families about stuff because fine it's like hang on a minute it's all right to talk about this stuff because it's on national telly which is why we need to see our stories reflected more don't we I would like to congratulate all of you on this fine piece of work I can't wait to see it go out thank on you. BBC two my pleasure thank you Satnam seriously <laughs>